Hello and welcome to another video. My name's David and this time I'm going to rewind the clock right back to when I first started using Photoshop. I created an effect which became known as the Hayes Island effect and I thought we'd bring it up to date and use Affinity Photo. Right, let's make a start. First thing we need to do is duplicate the background layer twice. So first of all, make sure it is highlighted. Now we can use Command J, Control J once and Command J, Control J again. There's our two copies. Always a good idea to rename them as we're working. So to the top layer, I'm going to double click over the word background. That's now highlighted it. Let's call it what it's about to become, which is a sketch FX. Right, coming down to the middle layer, double clicking on the word background once again, calling this what it's going to be, which is blurred. Okay, back to the sketch effect. We're going to go to filter. We're going to come to detect. We're going to go to detect edges, which gives us this effect. But we want to invert it. Now you could head up to layer, down to invert, but there's also a very simple shortcut. Press, hold down, command or control. Now press the letter I on the keyboard. There it is. We have inverted it. Just the effect we're after. Switching this off. Coming down to our blurred layer. Now to blur it, we're going to head up to layer. We're going to come down to new live filter layer, to blur, and across to Gaussian blur. Now with this, I'm just going to lift it up for the moment so we can see exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to take it up if you want that sort of, you know, when you really squint your eyes, that sort of effect there looks brilliant. What have we got? We got 8.1 pixels, but this is the sort of effect we're after. We're going to close this down. Next, we're going to add even more color to this layer. So make sure it's highlighted. Let's fold it up out of the way as well. So there's our blurred uh, filter. We're now going to go up to layer, this time down to new adjustment layer and coming across to hue, saturation and luminance. Now, first of all, make sure you, that you've got the master one. That's this one selected. So that white circle is around it. We're going to take it up into this sort of region here looks Pretty good, just backing it up slightly. Now this red is just a little bit bright for me, so I'm going to click on the red, which has given us this selection. But if you come to the little nodules, the little grab handles on the end, I'm going to pull this in. I want to narrow down our selection. Talk about selection, you can always click on picker. If you bring it out, if you click down, notice the way that just jumped up very slightly. So I'm just going to bring this in as well. So we're out of the oranges and just perhaps narrowing that down slightly into this region here. Now we can just take the saturation down as I'm starting to take it down. You can see we're working purely on that red there, which looks pretty good into this area here. Just noticed a little bit of the orange moving. So let's just take it here and dropping it down a little bit further. There looks really good. Right, clicking on the cross to accept it. Next, to bring through the Haze Island effect, we're going to click on the sketch effect. Let's put a tick in the box so we can actually see it. Heading up to blend modes, bring your cursor down. Now, it will depend on the tonal range of your image. So as you start to come through, there's the Haze Island effect. That looks pretty good on multiply. Just coming through, color burn. Yes, that looks good as well. Linear burn looks good. Let's go down a few more into this sort of region here. That looks really good as well. For the original Haze Island, I used soft lights, but uh, coming up with this one, I've got a feeling there looks pretty good. I'll tell you what, let's go for overlay, split the difference. That looks really good like that. If I use Command 1, Control 1, we can zoom into 100%. Pressing the spacebar gives me the hand tool so we can move around. And there it is. There is our Haze Island effect. But there's a few more little bits and pieces I'd like to do with this. Let's head out using Command-0, Control-0 to go to fit on screen. Now for a start, the canopy here and the chairs, I think the color range is just a little bit too close. I'm also going to press H on the keyboard to give me back the hand tool. So let's click on the blurred layer. This is now our live layer and we're going to select the canopy. Now, if you wanted to select a color to change, for example, this jumper, the freehand lasso, that would be ideal for the canopy. I'm going to use the marquee tool. I'm going to click, going to drag it over the canopy like this, just into this sort of region. Here will do nicely. There, right, stay still. 
Command 0, Control 0 to put it back. Okay, now with our selection, if we head up to Layer, if we come down to New Adjustment Layer, we're going to come across to HSL, Hue Saturation and Luminance. Right, moving it across, you can see this little white slither. That's what we're working on with the Hue Saturation Luminance. I'm going to go for the picker again. Let's bring it out. I'm going to go for this area here with our cyan. And you can see the way it's spun around. You can always click on cyan as well. And if I just come to this slider here, as we start to move it, yeah, we can have a blue canopy. We can take it into this region here. I've got a feeling something like this will just add to the image nicely, just bringing it back a little bit. Right, let's take the saturation down because I don't want it to be sort of too overpowering. So I'm going to bring the saturation down into that area. Let's take the luminance shift up as well into this just to fade it a little bit like that and let's close this down out of the way command d or control d will remove the selection and if i just switch it off you can see there it is with that uh, cyan color canopy switching it back on that looks much better right next how about a bit of texture now if you go over to your stock tab now if your stock tab isn't open if you go to view down to studio and if you head down towards the bottom there it is stock just click on that now you'll need to sign in to either pexels you've got upsplash you've also got pixbay but once you've signed in i've put in the search criteria of canvas texture and i came up with this one by lorenzo so let's bring it out placing it in the center releasing it and just waiting a few seconds and uh, in it goes now the size 6000 by 4000 is much bigger than the image. So I'm gonna head up to layer. I'm gonna come down to rasterize and trim, which is going to trim off the excess over the edges. Right, heading over to layer, changing the blend mode from normal as we start to come through. These are looking pretty good. Multiply, like the way that looks. So let's linear burn, and uh, back to multiply, linear burn. We're gonna go with multiply. Right, zooming in, Command 1, Control 1, we'll zoom into 100%, pressing the space bar to give me the hand tool. I'm looking at this area here into the canopy around that region as well. I'm just going to reduce it down very slightly. Let's take it down into that sort of region, something like this. That looks good. Command 0, Control 0 to go back to fit on screen. Right, click in here just to remove the slider. Next, we're going to add a border. So we're going to head down to Add Pixel Layer. When we click on this, in it goes as a new layer. Head over to the toolbox, pick up a paintbrush or press B on the keyboard will give you the paintbrush. With colors, make sure white is the foreground color. And in your brush panel, now don't forget if the brush panel or any of these panels aren't showing, head up to View, down to Studio. You'll see brushes right at the top, select that. I'm going to change it from Basic we're going to come down to dry media. Let's go for this one here, square chalk, bringing it out. It looks a bit round to me, but never mind. I'm going to press the right hand square bracket to make it larger. Don't forget we got white as our foreground color. We're going to add a border by simply clicking down and just coming around this area here. I'm going to avoid a little bit of that red jumper that we've worked so hard on. Coming around the bottom like this, just moving my way around. Got a little bit of an idea with this. I'm going to drop down. I'm going to go around the drop shadow and back up again like that. There it is. Well, you've got to do it, haven't you? Bit of an out of the frame effect. Okay, coming back up around this region here. Well, you can see where I am. Around the top, you can make it as loose or as tight as you want. Going over the lamp like that just to remove it. And there it is. There is our framework. One thing to finish off. I just want to bring through a little bit more contrast in some areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the sketch effect layer. Let's come up to layer. We're going to go down to new adjustment layer state. We're going to come down to curves. This is the sort of region that I want to select, which is going to be around this area here. So I'm going to click on it. There it is. Bingo right on. Just pulling it down very slightly into that area. And if I just move this to the side a little bit more, let's make the whites a little bit brighter. So just lifting that up like this. Let's pull it down a touch more. And there it is. 
There is our haze island effect. Pressing H on the keyboard before I click down and paint something else. Using Command 0, Control 0. There it is, I've got the hand tool. You can move the weight around. I really like this effect. It works really well with people, but it does work on a whole range of different subject matters. So give it a try. See what you think. Leave a comment below as well. That's always appreciated. And if we come around this area, that looks great like that. There are other things we can do with this as well. Just let me show you, because don't forget, we have used live filter layers. We have used uh, adjustment layers. So even after saving it, you can reopen it again. You can make further adjustments. Something you might like to try is I always use snapshots. You may have noticed as well, as if you just double click on this, there it is, it falls down. I just double clicked to bring it back. If snapshots isn't open, if you head back up to guess where, that's it view down to studio you'll see it down by the bottom and take a snapshot so if you like this particular one click on the camera and it's now asking us there it is a date and a time in that goes we can now experiment for example let's come to blur so i'm just going to unfold it here's our new live filter layer we had uh, 8.1 that's the number we put in now if you take this higher you get a little bit of a watercolor effect that could work for you Let's come over to our HSL. And if we come over to the master color, we can take this up even further to bring through some colors. You can experiment, take it up, take it down, bring up whatever colors you want to. Entirely up to you. But it's a great way. If we just close this for the moment, if I use Command 1, Control 1, it gives a really nice sort of watercolor effect as well. You might even want to fade down the sketch layer a little bit with this. Everything is adjustable. Just experiment. Have some fun with it. If you like this particular one, click on the snapshot, click OK to that. And if we just go back to our original, which is this one here, let's click on restore. And there it is. We're back to the Haze Island effect. I love using snapshots. It's a great way of being able to experiment. But there it is. Go on. Give it a try. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it the thumbs up if you have. Don't forget to subscribe, plenty more videos to come. And if you click that little bell icon, you'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.